with the Scrabble example, we were talking about working with a frequency distribution. I mean, it didn't say it, but this is. This is the mean for a frequency distribution that we found when we found the mean right here. And that's the median for a frequency distribution. But what if it's a relative frequency distribution? For example, your grading scale. Suppose Larry wants to calculate his grades in his statistics class with the grading scale listed below. Larry has received scores of 88%, 73%, 74% on his exams. His online homework percentage is 75.4% and his in-class percentage is 90.6%. His two project scores were 50 and 98. Okay, so here's the grading scale over here, and then you can see the grading policy. So the online homework is worth 10%, the in-class work is worth 10%, each, each exam is worth 15%, the projects together make 10% because each one of them is worth 5%, and the cumulative final oops, would be chapters 1 through 13, and that would be all worth 25%. I'm just making stuff up here. So this was 1 through 4 and so on. It doesn't really matter, right? Okay, so then I'm just trying to make this more regularly represent our course. Okay, so if Larry gets a 70% on the final exam, calculate his grade in the class. So you can see what I did here is I made a little table and I put his grades and I just chose to do them as whole numbers, um, numbers bigger than one. You can make them decimals as well. It doesn't really matter, but you just have to be consistent. So since I chose to go 75.4, I wanted to be consistent with that all the way through. Similarly, for the weights, you could do 10, 10, 10, 15, or you could do 0 0.10, 0 0.10, 0 0.15. As long as you're consistent and keep them either all decimals or all whole numbers, you'll be fine. Okay, so then I want to find the weighted mean, which you can see I found over here, but my computer ate the video. So let me go back to here. Stat, edit. And I typed in, well, first of all, I went up and pressed clear, enter, and got rid of the old, and then I typed in the new data. So here are all Larry's scores over here, and then there are all of the weights for the class, so all the different things everything's worth. All right, so then I want to go to stat, calculate, number one, and then L1 was my data, L2 was the frequency, or relative frequency in this case, of that data, because they were decimals, it's relative frequency. And then I go down to calculate and press enter. And you can see right there, 78.75, which means Larry's getting a 2.5. Now, it's important to note at this point that we've been using this whole frequency list thing through section 3.3, but we didn't use it in 3.1 or 3.2, and we're not going to use it again in 3.4 or 3.5. Frequency list only happens if you're looking at either a relative frequency distribution like this is, a frequency distribution like this, or a weighted mean, right, where not everything was worth the equal amounts. Right? So you're going to have to pay close attention to each problem and figure out, is this one that uses a frequency list or is this not one that uses a frequency list? Because you'll have to know the difference and make the calculations accordingly. The calculator only knows what you tell it to do, right? Okay, so Larry received a 2.5 in the class. We used a frequency list here, i.e. relative frequency of the weights. All right, now if Larry hasn't taken the final exam yet, what's the highest grade he could receive in the class and what's the lowest? So let me copy this just for a second. And what you're doing here is you're going to play around with this part, right? So the highest grade that he could receive on the final exam would be 100%. And the lowest grade he could receive would be a zero. So highest grade... That's what we'll go figure out right now. So if we put in, if I go to stat and I go to edit, and at the very bottom, instead of 78 for the final, what if I put in 100? That would be the highest grade that this person could have. So then I go to stat, go to calculate, number one, one variable stat, L1, L2, all that's good. Press enter on the calculate. The highest grade is an 84.25. So let's go put that in here. Let me type that up one second. All right, I typed that in. So the highest grade is when the final exam is 100%. That would make a grade of 84.25. All right, now what about the lowest grade? The lowest grade would be if they if Larry got a zero on that final, just never showed up. So stat, edit, or enter. I'm going to go up, up to the very top, and that kind of loops you back around. And I press zero, enter. And then stat, calculate on variable, everything's good. Go down to calculate and press enter. 
and that'd be 59.25. which would be a zero in the class, right? Actually, no, 59.25 would be a 0 0.5. So the highest grade Larry could receive is a 3.0. 84.25 is right here in that region, 84.25, okay? And the lowest is a 59.25, which is in there. Pretty close to a one point, but not quite. And on this end, pretty close to a 3.5, but not quite. Dig. That's how to figure out your highest and lowest grade possible in a course, which is a very handy thing to know.